Leonardo DiCaprio, como toma el tren. Happy Holiday, this is original style. So one of the many scams, prisoners used to be flooded up to their knees in water. I know this isn't the takeaway, but I didn't know that was a real person. <laughs> Yesterday we spent 13 hours on a boat snorkeling on white sandy beaches and watching the glorious sunset from a cabana. It was a huge day, so we're kind of counting today as our first full day in Cartagena. If you didn't know, Cartagena is on Colombia's Caribbean coast and the center district where we're staying is actually a walled city. It is such a hot spot for tourists and Colombians alike. It is packed out here. We are gonna try and see all of the things today and learn some things about pirates, which this city has a weird history with. To start the day, we have picked up our traditional cheese bread things and some fruit. One, because it's really easy, and one, because it's quite cheap. There's a motorbike. Given that we didn't get home from our massive day yesterday until like 10 p.m., I need a coffee. It's definitely started raining. But we just made it. We've come to a coffee shop called Abaco. This is the one that you're supposed to come to when you're in Cartagena. It was kind of created as a refuge from the madness out there. And it doesn't look super mad out there today, but trust us, it gets pretty crazy. It's surrounded by books. I think you can eat food here, get coffees here, and buy books. We have ordered two frappuccinos because even though it's raining outside, it's still kind of hot. I really need coffee though. We slept so well last night. It was a huge day yesterday, let alone the fact that we were in the sun literally all day. That always just takes it out of me so much. This place is really cool. It's like a coffee shop inside of a bookstore. Oh, it's strong as well. Yum. This is our last day in Cartagena, so even though the weather's not great, we don't have the luxury of waiting for a sunnier day because we've got an overnight bus to, ooh, thunder. We've got an overnight bus to Medellin. Weather forecast says that it should clear up later today, and I just hope that's true. <laughs> From the coffee stop, we've got about a 10 minute walk that takes us all the way to the fortification, which is the wall, and something else along the wall that's a little bit less visited. This is Las Bavedas, or the vaults in Spanish. It is literally vaults in a wall under the historic wall. It was built for storage originally, but when the problems started to come to Cartagena, they started putting the prisoners inside the vaults. And what's really cool that we're seeing it today is that you can see how high the water comes. Originally when these were built, prisoners used to be flooded up to their knees in water because the vaults were just flooded. Most of those prisoners were pirates, which leads me to my next point about the walls. Man loves a pirate story, man loves a deep dive. So grab a coffee, because I have a feeling this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> as soon as Cartagena was settled, it became a target for the pirates. And when it became one of the biggest and the most rich colony in all of Colombia, it became a really hot target. There's been French pirates and Dutch pirates, and one of the most notable ones is Sir Francis Drake. He came here. If you play video games, it's Nathan Drake's ancestor. Or if you like Tom Holland and you watch Uncharted, it's that guy's ancestor. He came here and stole a lot of loot and a few cannons, and that led them partially to building this wall and partially to inciting the conflict that was England versus Spain. This wall wasn't built instantly, so as the construction happened, a bunch of other pirates got here, and once it was completed, another old friend of ours, Captain Morgan, Henry Morgan, the rum. That guy came here, yeah, and he plundered it. Apparently one of his ships spontaneously blew up. I don't know if this is true, but I read it on a museum website. One of the ships just exploded and killed 900 of his men, but he still counts it as a victory. So it's kind of like subjective what a victory is, but I'm sure he got away with a lot of gold. Sounds like it was an accident. Si, accidente. I had no idea that Captain Morgan, I know this isn't the takeaway, but I didn't know that was a real person. <laughs> It is not letting up the weather, so I think we're gonna duck away from the rain for a bit and come back out for dinner, maybe in a different neighborhood. So we are staying in Centro, which is just through those walls, and as the name suggests, is the historic center of town. But we've heard that there's a pretty cool neighborhood about a 10 minute walk south called the Getsemani neighborhood. 
It's supposed to be kind of where the artists and the backpackers go to hang out. There's going to be art on the wall and they're supposed to have really good food. And I'm getting pretty hungry, so we're going to head there now. I knew it was going to be colourful, but I did not expect that. That was awesome. The artwork and the architecture combined is just so beautiful. And the artwork is so colourful and lively, and I wish I could buy some. The sun has started to go down very slowly, so we're going to walk around, grab maybe some quick food, and then head to the beach, or to the wall, for a beer. For sunset. <laughs> Sit down and eat them. So we've come down to get some money just to get some food, Armani. <laughs> we got a chicken or a pollo pastry, yeah. I was gonna say that they're like an arepa, but they're not really, like they're folded a bit different. We got two pollo pastries and one queso pastry. Then we're gonna eat these and then head to the water. We have become slightly obsessed with these pollo pastries. They are sold everywhere and they are pretty much always delicious. Not bad. Not the best one we've ever had, not the worst. It's like curry chicken inside with some potato as well. I really like that. That might be one of my favorites. For the three pastries we got, we paid 7,000 pesos, which is like $2.30, $2.50. And we picked up a Coke for 4,000 pesos just from a vendor guy that was walking around the square. Pretty good. So one of the many scams of this kind of a hustle city is those guys coming up to you and rapping. I've seen them follow people as well, just continuously rapping and then asking for money. So we just say, no gracias, no tenero, and you you walk away because they if don't you, make eye contact. You yeah, walk. <laughs> if you catch their eye, you're cooked. <laughs> It's about this time of night that the city starts to get like this orange golden tinge to it. All the lights here are like those soft yellow lighting. Makes it look really pretty, really brings out the colonial architecture. the only restaurant on the wall for a nice sunset beer but there is a huge line because obviously it's the best place to go but people sell beers up here so <laughs> it's so pretty even though we got here late and we're arguably like the worst place it's beautiful and we got a really good sunset rapping are doing. You come here with an Eskia beers. You sell them. That's the move. That is the move. Everyone's here for sunset. Yeah. Everyone wants a beer. Yeah. I, there's like three or four guys walking around with white Eskies selling beers and I reckon they're gonna run out because there's so many people here. Everyone wants a beer. 